it is the Arena Championship. Um, this super exclusive 32 player event with like $200,000 in prize pool is beginning. And yeah, I mean, maybe you've watched my earlier videos where uh, in the uh, historic qualifiers with the Gotham Crab Finder deck, you might have seen how I qualified for this event. And yeah, you know, months have passed and now it's finally time to, to play this uh, tournament. Um, the tournament structure here consists of three rounds of draft, for actually all will be one draft, followed by six rounds of historic, and then a cut to top eight. So that's what I will be uh, covering in these uh, review videos. Um, not too many arena tournaments these days where like a lot of it is moving into live paper magic, where I obviously can't do review videos uh, for all my matches. Uh, but yeah, this one is, uh, is different. Um, so I get to do this event and yeah, it's, it's exciting. Um, I spent, you know, a week preparing for this event by the Amalfi Coast, like amazing scenery, uh, of the mountains with Stefan Schutz, Matthew Kuisma and Leo Lahonen, like three teammates, uh, who also all qualified for this event. Uh, so we like, spent the time working on historic and, you know, mostly like we've all played the, the previous pro tour in uh, Philadelphia. So we were already pretty caught up on draft and actually like, you know, I, I do, you know, feel pretty good about this draft format. I've done like a lot of drafts and like reviewing my own draft blocks was something like I, I ended up doing a lot, just like trying to check my own biases and, you know, I'm trying to like consume a lot of content and so on, like talk to other players, review my draft blocks with other players too. Um, it really helps like, you know, to get me up to speed on limited. And at this point, you know, I'm feeling pretty good about the, uh, the format here. And so I am uh, seated here uh, in this draft pod. I'm draft pod one at this event. There's like a lot of incredible players here. Uh, luckily, I you know, dodged having too many uh, of the absolute greatest ones in my pod, like Yusha Takahashi and Str Andre Straski and so on were also in this tournament. Um, but passing to me in this pod here, you can see I'm the, the Warren Clicks character. And passing to me is Elias Watzfeld, and we also got um, Luca Magni, uh, former Rivals member uh, from Italy. And Il Elias Watzfeld is like the previous draft master uh, on the Pro Tour um, from Sweden. And then uh, I'm passing to uh, Zakov Kirill, who is um, a Russian GP grinder, and then also to passing to Deathsea here, the limited streamer. Um, so that, that's the makeup of the draft here as I sit down and crack open my pack. And you know, obviously like, you know, this is a very exciting moment. Like what do you open here? Um, and so you can maybe like catch a glimmer of the, the card at the corner there. And yeah, this is my opening pack. So um, yeah, so just to like unwind here, what's actually going on here. Uh, we open the Mercurial Spell Dancer, which is like definitely not the, the, the rare you want to open. It reads pretty powerful. It's like legacy playable. I, it, you know, you, it's very easy to, for it to keep copying spells. Um, and if you don't think it's bad, the issue is that it's just not um, powerful enough to be like first pickable quality. Uh, it's more like, you know, solid uncommon, solid common type of uh, type of quality and like mid-level, I guess. And also like mostly good in specifically blue red, which is like definitely the blue archetype I'm happiest with drafting. I'm definitely not avoiding blue. In general, my strategy going into this is that I kind of have, I feel like I have a really good overview on how to draft each color combo. And so there's nothing that I really don't want to be in. There's also a lot of color combinations where I feel like I have a grasp on like the multiple different like archetypes you can end up in within that color combination. And I feel like I would have a pretty strong grasp on, on how to navigate anything. So I'm not really trying to avoid something. I'm definitely preferring red or white decks because like those are the stronger, the stronger colors, but if anything like is open, I'm gonna like, try and like keep myself open and keep an eye out for like what the other players are passing me that I can uh, situate myself in. So opening the spell dancer, yeah, not uh, too heavy with first picking that. We also got the ambulatory edifice, which I think is a pretty strong black card. Um, but also there's a bladehold war whip, which is a multicolor card, but it is also one of the highest win rate cards on 17 lands. Um, it is worth noting that this draft happened online. Uh, so we're actually allowed to have um, external tools available to us. So that means that during the draft, I could just go up and look up win rates on 17 lands, for instance. Not that I value them extremely highly, but I think they're still a pretty good indicator for um, for like if there's you know um, two cards where I'm not sure how good they are relative to each other, it might be good to like just check um, have like a, a groundwork to work from from the the 17 lands. Um, 
in the end here, I did decide to take the blade to a war whip. Um, obviously, the, yeah, being a gold card when it's in the two best colors uh, is totally fine. So yeah, I'm, I'm happy to take this, but I'm definitely not locking myself into just being red light. Um, I also usually do a quick scan of like, is there anything like important that could wheel here? I do know that the Vulture Splitter could wheel, um, and a card that like, is definitely playable in red light um, as another equipment. So is that good to know? And if that card doesn't wheel, that also tells me something. All right, next pack here. So, what do you got going on? Um, well, there's another good black card here with the Anoint with Affliction, uh, which is definitely the best common here and probably the best card in the pack. The uncommons are like not incredible, but the Resistant Skywarden is actually pretty good. Um, when I, uh, I I did a quick check here on the stats because I wasn't really sure like how these two compare to each other, because it's definitely like you know the classic second pick of like do you pick something that matches your first pick or do you pick the best card in the pack? And usually that answer is always like, it depends. Depends on the strength of your first pick and depends on the like relative gap between the best card and the card that fits with what you're doing. Um, it, it turns out that like Anointed with Affliction does have like a few percentage points better or not a few, but like a few decimals better than the Resistance Skywarden. Um, but they're actually pretty close in win rate. It's very clear that like the Anointed Affliction is still better. Um, just part of why it's it's close is that black is also generally a less winning color, so it makes sense that uh, that that um, annoyed would be uh, like that, that its win rate would just artificially be lower. Um, so you have to take that into account when you look at data. Then if you think like if this was pack one, pick one, I would pick the annoyed with affliction. Starting on a five drop is also not great. It's definitely not what I want to be. Like if anything, I would want to um, lean towards the cheap cards. But another factor uh, creeping in here is that like the, the best card I passed was the black card, the Ambulatory Edifice. And so it's definitely a little bit of an argument to to like pass the Anoint as well. I don't think it's like, you know, enough by itself, but the fact that the Skywarden also fits to my wall whip, I do think Skywarden is pretty good. Um, and it, it's like not that easy to play Anoint and War whip in the same deck. So in the end, I ended up taking the Skywarden here. I'm actually not quite sure it's correct looking back at this though. Cause again, I said I didn't want to, I didn't want to marry my first pick here and just like hold myself uh, attached to this blade hold War whip. But um, it could definitely be that, uh, uh, that I should have just, uh, get myself like if you're just taking the best card here and like see where it ends up going but on the other hand if i do that i'm just like so much less likely to play one of these really high win rate cards so i do i'm taking the sky one here you'll see me like take a picture of the pack i post that to myself um like in a document so i can like go back and review it later once the pack comes around or if i want to check like wh what could there possibly be good things to wheel here um but anyway yeah take, taking the sky one here and proceeding with the draft here uh, and now we have another pack here. Okay, well, again, the best card is the black card here. We got the Bil Bilius Skull Dweller. Bilius Skull Dweller? Probably Bilius, like, because it's Bile. Um, which, you know, does have the better stats compared to the other ones. It would have been a very nice draft if you start Edifice into Anoint into Skull Dweller. I would not have complained about, like, that black start. Uh, but we also have two really good red white cards and specifically red white two drops i just picked a five drop right which means that i really want to prioritize having the low end of my curve set um and the the choices here are between action engraver and mandible justice card um i do think pack one pick one and just in to the stats as well like the engraver is the better card overall um but specifically in red white i would suspect that justice card is actually the better card um, the issue with Justicar usually keeping its win rate down is that it's really good in two of the white archetypes and a lot more like replaceable in the other two. Like in any uh, any of the toxic archetypes, it just like doesn't really pull its weight. But in red white, there are a lot of artifacts, and you can definitely like use that life bopper to compensate for the fact that you're playing like a bit of a clunky card with all the equipments that end up being kind of clunky. So. Um, I w if I was sure that it was gonna be red white, I would prefer the Justicar. But since I don't know yet, and it's also very possible, right, that I play the Sky Warden, but not the Whip. Um, and in that case, the Engraver just fits better, and the Engraver is still perfectly fine in straight red white. So I'm gonna I'm gonna pick that up here. Um, no need to see if anything relevant would wield. The Mirror and Batish is definitely relevant if I uh, am considering red white, because um, that card is pretty bad, but it's totally playable in red white, um, but just pretty bad everywhere else. 
And like we got that juicy hazardous blast that I'm pretty sure is not wheeling, uh, but because that's like kind of a sought after red card. All right, so pick four here, um, and I quickly scan the pack here, and as you can see, immediately uh, clicking on the ruthless predation, identifying that as the best card in the pack. I do think it's better than the rift skiff, um, especially for uh, like red light. Um, if you're not too interested in the toxic, this one gets a lot worse. The Gitsection Raptor is a notable pass here because it um, is the best blue common, I think. Uh, and so it's definitely like something to note, but usually like people don't value this card as high as I do. Um, we on Team Handshake were like pretty high on blue and the Raptor especially. So um, I don't think I would like you know, move into blue for just this when they're good alternatives, but it's something that I could definitely move into blue for in a weaker pack. Uh, we do got Ruthless Predation, which is obviously a really strong green card, but that's off-color. And then actually we have another alternative here in the Hazardous Blast. That's like the only good on-color option here. We have the Leonin Lightbringer, which is a perfectly fine playable in red-white, but um, that's something I'm hoping to pick up in the wheel. One of the strong things about red-white is that it, like, there's some really bad 3-drops in red and white that are not really playable anywhere else, but it's actually good in the equipment archetype, and you usually get those on the wheel. So. Well, a lot of people in this format struggle to have good free drops because this free drops kind of suck if you're not blue. Um, the the red white archetype get them like much more for free. Uh, then there is also this yeah hazardous blast that I have to compare with the the ruthless predation, and the and if you think that the predation is the better card, pack one pick one. Um, the hazardous blast does fit better with what I'm doing, um, but then also I realize something. Um, so see that the timer run down here, it's actually, uh, I did take a long time on this pick. I realized that if I am, if I pick the, the predation and end up in red green, um, it's actually, I actually think hazardous blast is better than predation in red green specifically. Uh, because a lot of the time in red green, your plan is to like get in a few points of damage early. Um, and then you can kind of like, you know, use your... Uh, all you go to trolls and whatnot, and I try and set up a board and like dig towards your hazard blast, and then you use that to like finish the game because you have all the beefy power and the green, and then obviously making things unblockable is perfect with the hazard blast. Um, so it's like kind of like a cornerstone to red green archetype. I know that I'm grafting with good players, and they're not gonna just like you know, give me a hazard blast for free. So getting that early here might actually be nice. And then also, of course, if I do end up red white or any other red archetype, the hazard blast is gonna be playable. Whereas the ruthless predation, if I'm not playing green, it's just not gonna be good. And I'm obviously more likely to be red than green at this point. So I ended up picking the hazard blast here. Um, but I do note that this Ruthless Predation was sent to me. It kind of might be a signal that green could be open, uh, coming from that side. And uh, it's definitely like something, you know, it's not like a for sure green is open, but it's like a blip on the radar. So we'll see what the next pack entails. All right, this pack is kind of weak. Again, we have one of those like good uh, cards for the the red-white archetype uh, with the Blade Grab Aspirant. I'm definitely like, a lot less excited by the, the two Corrupted cards here in white, so... In general, we haven't really seen that much quality white past me. I did see the Justice card, but I am a bit worried that white might not be open here. That's okay. I, again, we're not married to the Wall Whip. We're like, getting pretty deep into red. Uh, but it does look like we might not take a red card here. I could take the Aspirant here. Um, it kind of helps um, strengthen a signal like, that I'm sending to my neighbor. Like, like you do not go into red. Um, it's usually a pretty strong strategy in this format. You just like stick to one color and then like in pack two you can kind of see based on what rare you open or get past like which other color you're supposed to pair it with. Um, I do think Blade Graft Aspirant is a bit too weak to do that. I don't think it will sway anyone on, uh, on my left if I pass a, an Aspirant. I don't think they'll move into red for that. So, um, and there are actually like two I think pretty good cards here in the Oil Gulcher Troll and the Testament Bearer. Um, obviously the, the troll is, is kind of juicy given that I was past the green card last. Um, but I also think that the, the Testament bearer has a lot of merits here. Um, I definitely think that like this, the, the bearer is kind of like a cornerstone to one of the black archetypes, which is the like, you know, um, grindy trying to trade off resources type of red, uh, black deck. And that goes especially well in red black. That's something that that archetype can do pretty well. Um, so I'm kind of looking at this testament bearer. The issue is, of course, I've passed so much black. So if I do go into black late here, it's going to be kind of awkward because, like, obviously I won't get much black at the end of the pack because you don't really get much at the end of the pack. And then I also won't get much in pack two. So it's going to be kind of a wild, wild ride at the 
expectation that black is actually open i can get some good in, in pack three um whereas if i take the troll here as i said green might be open um it's definitely not i don't think a high pick uh i would really hope to pick these up like on the wheel or these close to the wheel not every red green deck even wants the troll um so i'm not really sure i'm supposed to pick it up here but uh, I do have an action engraver, which which helps me a little bit, and it depends a little bit on like you know, if I am the like slower red green deck, one that might splash, one that might rely on hazardous blast for just like ball stalling and then use that to finish the game. That's where the troll is kind of at home, and I could like maybe you know angle myself a little bit more towards that style of, of red green deck. So, um, in the end here, I do go with the troll. I'm really not sure that it's the, the correct pick compared to the testament bearer, but. The fact that I passed all those black cards does have me a little bit um, more leading towards the troll as the, the better option here. All right, well, now this is a pretty good red-green signal. Um, obviously, this pack is pretty stacked. Like, we got, you know, like, Whisper of the Draws, Charge of Match, Chrome Prattle, Surgical Skull Bomb. Like, all these cards are pretty good. The Glare can be okay. Um... But we also got some like really high high pick comments here with the action engraver and the mantis. Uh, the mantis is obviously incredible in red green. Um, but again, uh, it kind of like sucks that I have to pass it because I think the engraver is maybe better than the mantis in red green. I'm not actually sure about that, but it is. You know, I'm still more likely to be red than I am to be green at this point. I think it's pretty likely that I'll be both, so obviously I have to take that into consideration. But we don't know anything for sure yet. And the engraver is still really good in, in red, uh, in red green. It does like work to enable the troll. So I am just gonna pick that up here, um, and and see where that leads me. Uh, I wonder if I can jump ahead. No, okay, that's fine. All right, at least like, you know, we also have, you know, another two drop here, which is definitely relevant. And we do pick up a Cultivator here. So this thing in Hive Master is also really good black card, so it's worth noting, but we've seen like some quite good green cards lately. And the Cultivator is exactly what you want for a deck that tries to enable the troll. Um, if you wanted these bigger red green decks, obviously the Engravers kind of play into this too, because they're not the most aggressive card, but they're really good at like defending, locking down a board and then paying you off for creating a board stall. Because obviously, like, you know, then you can start turning your lands you draw into spells and you have the trolls that also start generating value and you know this could kind of be your game plan uh, so definitely happy with the cultivator here um and at this point it is looking very much like i uh, i will be red green um i will note actually if we go back here i mean again there are some white cards and like the, the Lightbringer is okay in red white but i think the cultivator is just a way better quality card and it's generally not seem like a hat that I've had the same like quality of cards. I did see the Charge of Mites earlier, but that was in the same pack as the Mantis, and the Mantis is definitely a better card than the Charge of Mites. So, all in all, I think the uh, the the green signal is stronger than the red one. Okay, here we get a Hazardous Blast pick eight as well. Um, there are, is another option here. I could take the Attendant. Um, I think that like might even be the stronger card, especially given I have one Blast already, because um, this card is very strong in red white. But again, the issue is that like the signal just hasn't really been there for white being super open. White toxic has seemed okay open. There's a lot of corrupted cards coming my way, um, but that's not really what I want to pair with my red cards anyway. And having two hazardous blast is actually like, I can just pick this and just have that be my game plan. I, I'm you know if I can like just lock down the board and try and find the hazardous blast. I'm thinking that like that is how I want to situate myself to win the game. Now, I haven't tried to draft this specific archetype before. I have drafted red-green before, but that was more of the, like, combat trick-heavy version. Um, the one that wants Furnace Strider over Oligarch Troll. Um, so this is, like, a bit of a different take, and I'm actually not 100% sure that it even works. Uh, with that Hazard Blast might get a lot worse if you're not dealing damage early, but... Right now, I'm thinking that I can at least make this work, right? Have that just be my game plan and my payoff for locking down the board. And obviously, like, if I don't get much damage in early, that means I have to accumulate a lot of damage, uh, a lot of power in play, but maybe I'm able to do that. So, yeah, we'll see if that works out here. Um, pick nine. All right, so notably, the Wolfshark Splitter did not table. So, <laughs> that is a pretty good sign that, like, the... 
the the equipment deck is not super open, or at least like the like red is contested in some ways. Um, also, the uh, the Koldatha, um Cackler also didn't table, which I am also not too happy with being in red green. So it's a little bit of a danger signal. There is a Chrome Prowl here, which is definitely the best card in the pack, and I also think Zero Head Cleaver is not bad. Um, so. There's a, you only have two green cards at this point. There is a slight chance that you just pick the Grown Prowler and like see if red blue is, is a better situation for me. But the, the the setup I have right now does favor red green pretty heavily. I had to, to read earlier. Um, I don't remember there being many good uh, many good green cards in this opening pack. Yeah, I think there was only one green card, right? Plus the Maze Skull Bomb, I guess. But um, which I guess matters. But like, you know, maybe like. If it ended up like that's just taking May Skull one way higher than everyone else. I didn't know that that he would do that, but um so actually like there's there's no like warning sign in terms of like green being closed uh at this point. So I uh Oh, that's the cultivator, that's the blast, and here. So I just end up taking this war singer. I'm hoping not to play it, it just goes straight to my sideboard. Um but I just wanna like make sure that like that green signal is like sent off and like okay. I mean, I know that I sent you like some good green cards earlier, but like the green is cut now. You know, if if you're dabbling, if you're not unsure what you are, you do not go into green. That that is my territory now. So pick up a hunter maze. Definitely happy to pick up those now. I want about two copies of the these lands, maybe even three. Especially if you're playing Rustwine Cultivator, I think it's important that you're you don't flood out. So you just pick up these lands and um and roll with it. All right. So here I have a picture between Maze Skull and Raskus Fall. I think I end up taking the Raskus Fall here, uh, just because it's like, a stronger card, but I, I should just take the Mace Skull Bomb. I, I'm actually like likely to play it, and I'm not, again, it's like, kind of another signal, right, where um, it is actually a playable green card. So, yeah, I'm not sure if I would have ended up playing it in the end, but it, I think it's just a bit loose. Because um, I'm definitely not going black, and even though it obviously gets some like playable black cards at the end there. Anyway, we open up back here, and there's a useless black rat rare. Um, we open a Borag, one of the best commons. Uh, definitely snap it up here. And now I'm just trying to like look at the pack here. Okay, so the action of Grave are definitely not tabling, but this Oil Guard to Troll might table. Um, so that's really what I'm hoping for here. Like it's not unreasonable to expect to table these if there's no other Red Green Drafters at the table. Um, and again, not all Red Green decks even want it, so it's actually likely to table it anyway. Here we see an Incubation Sack, uh, which is really strong for like my game plan of like, okay, I want like cheap things that enable my trolls. I want to table this troll here. And then I just want to lock down the board and generate value and accumulate enough power to win with Hazel's Blast. Incubation Sack does all of this perfectly well. So that's definitely like a card I, I'm super happy to see here. Obviously, we've got no rare so far, but I don't know. I feel like we can manage here. Uh, Furnace Rider, definitely like not. Uh, I don't want more five drops at this point, especially with the trolls coming back potentially. But there is a good Battle Fist here. Just a nice two drop. Um, very good at creating power on the board. And so we just picked that one up. So one thing I'm noting right now, as I look for my deck here, I'm thinking maybe I splash the War Whip. At this point, it's kind of unlikely because I don't have any fixing, uh, but I don't have any removal either. I do pick up this um, this Urbrask, uh and Anointer, which uh, does qualify as removal in some ways. Um, I will note that this card is a lot worse than it looks. It's actually kind of hard to make it work where you just go like oil, 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 play the Urbrask Anointer, kill your like three three. It just like doesn't really come up that often. Um, but especially since I'm also looking at enabling these trolls, I'm hoping to get back. Uh, it actually, it's very possible that I could, um, like, I'm just gonna like prioritize anything that says oil on it really highly at this point now. And that obviously makes the anointer more likely to work. And especially if I am the only red green raffler, that's a big if, um, then, uh, then that's gonna come together like more easily. But yeah, just a note, like this card is not perfect. So here we have Battle Fist versus Amantis. I'm not sure, maybe Battle Fist is a better card, but here I'm just gonna take the one that says oil on it. Um, Cause we really wanna like, you know, hammer down on these synergies. And just, I think just, just that just matters more. This pack, unfortunately, not great. I was really hoping that my two drop would not include the Branch Blight Stalker. Um, I can't actually read the name in this uh, setup here. That's unfortunate, and I, I kind of forgot them all. But um, obviously, I don't care about the toxic three one body is okay because it just creates power on board. So I mean, I'm hoping not to play this, but if I don't end up with enough two drops, I am just gonna play it. It's totally fine. 
Uh, really was hoping to have the uh, the two drop that just like the green two two that just has two oil counters on it, but doesn't really do much else. It can pump things, but whatever. Um, that one is something that I was really hoping to hit because that obviously helps enable all my my oil stuff. I say all my oil stuff right now. It's just two cards, but yeah, I'm hoping that there's more trolls at this point. Anyway. Um, just telling you where my mind is at here. I'm still like thinking about the, the fact that I'm missing out on removal is kind of an issue. Um, and so here there's like, you know, there's a Kiniverse Canopy, which is definitely not the greatest. It could have been my main deck, but Blazing Crescendo is just such a much better card, I think. So I'm going to end up taking that here. Um, and also I think there's a lot of value to having some combat tricks because this is open deck list draft. And like as long as I have some combat tricks, it allows me to make much more like you know, um, it makes it just much harder for the opponent to block, right? So, uh, I think like you lose a lot of value by not picking up any combat tricks, even if you're not gonna play them. All right, we get to pick nine here. Uh, we did pick up a canopy. As is looking right now, I might not have running that, but there's no troll in this pick. Uh, I was really hoping to see a troll in this pack here, but then it would come back. But someone else snacked it up. That makes me a little, tiny bit worried um, that we might not be the only red green drafter. Maybe the other red green drafter is even close. Uh, I was hoping that like you know, there's obviously an easier with some of the green cards I passed and maybe someone moved into the color combination. Yeah, so I I'm not super thrilled here. I can take the uh, four chamber centurion here. I'm hoping and praying that I won't play it because um, in general, like you want your red green decks to just be like you want the Vorak and you want the. Um, the, the, the furnace cackler uh and that's it for your three drops right? i didn't want some uncommons maybe um so it happens a lot they just have a bunch of twos and a bunch of fours and not many threes and that's okay um just the free drops are just kind of bad uh even though there are a lot of them at common um the centurion it does say oil on it so if i really need to i can play it but it's just so unlikely that i can actually make it like the, it actually works well right it needs to like sit on the battlefield see other things die and then, yeah, here, pick 10, and again, someone else picked up the troll. So, and I only get a Centurion here. Um, my oil counter low is a little bit, uh, my, my oil counter is a little bit low right now, and I do, still don't have removal, right? So, I'm really, like, you know, in, in, a, <laughs> in a pickle here. I do get a Cackler really late. That's actually kind of awesome, but it is another thing that pays me off for oil, and again, I'm a bit worried about my oil counter right now. I mean, I'm hoping not to play these Centurions, so without those, I have the Sack, um, I just placed that on four in because it doesn't really do anything relevant until turn four. Uh, so for curve purposes, it is a four drop. Um, but I have the sack. I guess the mantis kind of counts, and then we have the two engravers and the cultivator. So that's like four and a half ish. The the, the mantis is like obviously it counts, but it's a really juicy target for removal. The cheap things aren't. Um, I guess the mantis should count fully. So it's like you know I have five things that, that care about oil. If I don't play the centurions. And the Centurion stuff, we don't count fully. So, yeah, I'm hoping to get Salvage here. And, okay, okay, there is a Hex Gold Slash here. And one of the best commons. It's a removal spell, something I absolutely need. But there's also um, the Agenta Masticor here. i um, hoping I'll hover over it. Oh, that was very quickly. Yeah. So, this is the first rare we've seen that actually fits into the archetype here. Um, it's, it's very big and hard to beat in combat. Uh, and has this like weird thing where like, you know, you, you have to discard a card every turn, but then you destroy something. Um, it's very good if your opponent's playing tokens, because you can discard lands and then kill the tokens from, let's say, the four Mirrodin equipments. Uh, but it also like, it doesn't have like amazing stats and I really do need removal. And, you know, again, I'm spotting a troll here. There is the thing about troll, where there's a very real limit to how many trolls you can put in your deck. And so I'm hoping that whoever took the other two trolls earlier is going to be full and not take this troll. So it's actually still pretty, like, I can still, I wouldn't say pretty likely, but it is reasonably likely that this troll will wheel. And so I can kind of expect that I'll have that. And at that point, I'm I'm also getting pretty full on five drops. So the Master Core also gets a bit worse for that. Obviously, I, I am going to play fairly high curve deck, which does make the Master Core better. One of the issues with this card is if you play it in like a white deck, which is usually super low curve, um, it just ends up looking stupid. We discard a two drop every turn and you don't kill anything. Uh, but that's not really, it, it's going to be much better here. But so is the removal spell. And in the end, I do decide to 
just pick the hex skull slash. I really need it for my uh, removal count, and you know, not, not much I can do about that. So, I'm gonna have to pass up a rare here. We're just gonna go rareless and careless, and it's gonna be fine, you know. If we can just fill out the last holes our deck really needs here, it does look fairly solid. And all right, so this pick here is kind of a brick. Um, the brutalizer is definitely not bad, but it's also just a vanilla 4 4. It's kind of hard to cast sometimes, which is an issue for the card you want to play on curve. Um, but it does block well, it puts power on the board, and yeah, I'm just like not interested in any of the other cards here. Uh, noticeably, the furnace skull bomb was there, but I think that does not really count as a good way to put on all the counters. The free from flash dodge count is a good way to put on all the counters, but uh, there's a ruthless predation, and again, I'm hungry for removal, so I will pick that up here. Um, oh, with the free from flash. Actually, I wonder if I'm even supposed to do that, giving the the necessity for oil, but nah, I think the, the pr predation is just too good. All right, so here we get another cultivator. I definitely feel like you know, liking two in in the style deck, it's probably fine. I'm expecting my curve to be a bit higher, and. Uh, it is, of course, like another like cheap way to enable my oil stuff. So, yeah, okay, my my deck is forming up pretty well here. I'm hoping still to not play the Centurions. Right now, I can start to like start to count the amount of um, playables I have. And ooh, okay, we get another predation here. So actually, that rounds up our removal suite pretty nicely, I would say. Um, definitely not perfect, but th this is like workable amount of removal. Uh, we obviously don't pick the viral spawning because we're not gonna toxic our opponent. This is also why I'm down on the branch blight stalker and the brutalizer because these cards are just so much better when you care about poisoning the opponent, but that's just not gonna happen at all in this deck. So, yeah, we're gonna, uh, we're just gonna grab that, uh, that removal spell there, and oh, this is kind of a break as well. As I said, I really want to have two um, sacrifice lands in, in this archetype, at least, maybe even three. Especially with the Vorak to find them now and have two cultivators. So, yeah, I'm, you know, it kind of stinks to pick that up this early, but I gotta do what I gotta do. Another pack here where I really was hoping to see some other oil enabler. Um, that's really what I'm looking for at this point, but I do get another good two drop here. Um, in the end, though, I actually end up getting tempted by the engulfer here. I'm not gonna be 100% sure that the troll wheels. If this is like all the top end I have, these cultivators end up getting a lot more um, suspicious. And I think I need really need something bigger to kind of like break through with my hazardous blast and so on. And I do have enough radio drops. I mean, the slinger would kind of replace the stalker presumably. Um, well, like at least these centurions, but yeah, it, it's, I could definitely use the, the, the slinger if I want, I could play the, the Carnivorous Canopy as main deck artifact hate, so maybe don't need this as much as I just need a uh, a big 6-5 here. I'm not sure what the correct pick is, is at the end. Um, I do end up regretting taking the engulfer, but maybe with the info I had at that point. Okay, now pick 8, the troll wheel. Oh wait, hold on. No, it's pick 8. The troll didn't wheel. This is a new troll, which is get pick 8. Okay, that's awesome. Um, As I said, I'm looking for a bit of top end now. It's not perfect because, like, again, my oil count is a bit on the low end. Um, I do kind of have enough to support this, so if you're gonna pick it here, no other options. All right, we do reel the other troll. I'm not sure I'm playing all three at this point, but on the other hand, it does play pretty well into the board stall plan. And yeah, let's just pick another one up at least for the sideboard and round out the draft here. So, okay, well, we definitely do have enough playables here. This is 23 playables. This is how I expect my deck to look. It's a bit clunky, it does have the trolls. Um, in the end, my, uh, my final deck, I end up deciding that, oh, I, and I actually get another engulfer here, which makes my f previous pick of the, the shrapnel sling look kind of silly, but yeah, that is what it is. Um, the, uh, my final deck here, I end up deciding that even though I am kind of set on two drops, I think like having six plays before turn three is pretty good. I also have the hex Ghost slash, that's, um, another one. So like that's seven plays before turn three. That's usually fine. Um, that's about you know the way you're trying to get with this uh, in this format here. It's really important you have like at least six plays before turn three, I would say. But because of the nature of red green, I don't have that many three drops that I really want to play because the three drops in red and green are, at common are pretty bad. Um, and my ruthless predations also don't really count as early plays. So if I don't have any of these two drops or if they get dealt with in some way, um. I actually like only have uh, nine plays before turn four 
Obviously, I'm not counting the sack because it doesn't affect anything before Gen 4. And like, yeah, my Crescendo and my Hazard's Blast are not helping with that. So, I do fear that my deck might be a bit too clunky in, in some scenarios. And I kind of needed to play just one of the four Chambers and Tyrions. It's definitely not great, but it is sometimes a way to enable my Oriel. So, very regrettably, I ended up putting that in my deck. I wasn't sure what to cut. I consider cutting the Brutalizer, but it's also a good blocker and has enough power. In the end, I ended up moving the Engulfer to my sideboard. Uh, yeah, that's definitely next. You know, the fact that I picked it over a two drop that I would have absolutely played in this deck over the Centurion. Uh, ends up looking a bit silly then. I'm thinking that like if I'm in matchups where I'm much more sure that I'll have time to play the Engulfers, or maybe I just need a Reach Blocker or something, um, I'll bot them in. But as it stands, yeah, I'm not. Uh, uh, I, I think the, the, the build ended up being uh, just a bit too uh, a bit too clunky here. So that is my draft deck. Um, again, you know, pretty early on, I picked up the Zero Hazardous Blasts and kind of like tried to draft around them. I'm really hoping here that the strategy does work. I think my deck is pretty good at locking down the board, playing blockers, and like capitalizing on that. The engravers and the trolls work super well with that. Um, my biggest concern here is that I'm actually not that good at dealing early damage and it's very possible that it's actually going to be kind of hard for me to assemble the full, um, like maybe I have to assemble 20 power in play in order for my Hazardous Blast to be lethal. Um, and so they might actually just end up clunking up my draws. Um, so yeah, we'll see how it plays out, that's at least my concern for now, but I've, you know, I've read about this archetype and that Hazardous Blast is important, so I'm just going to trust that and trust that I, I can main deck two copies of, of the Blast here and ha have it function. Um, but at, at least I have some sideboard options to switch out in case I uh, in case I need. And yeah, you'll see me edit the deck, I end up adding the, the Centurion, cutting an engulfer at the very end here, but that is very video ends. Anyways, you can um, watch my reviews of the, the draft games as well. On if you're inclined, and there's obviously also six rounds of historic coming up with our sweet, sweet reanimator deck. See ya, bye.